Welcome everybody to Coffee Talk. Uh, once again, we're here with Erin, uh, just to kind of talk a little bit more about on the message and um, just learn a little deeper uh, about some of the truths that, that uh, were in Matthew 25. Mm -hmm. And so this is the parable of the talents. Yep. And um, it's a really good content there, really good message. And you asked a lot of rhetorical questions, <laughs> or unanswered <laughs> questions that uh, it's good for us is to dig up, for us to think about. So I wondered if maybe we could just talk through yeah. a couple of those. Love it. So um, this one really stood out to me um, about pleasing God. Mm. Yeah. And can we please God? Have we thought about pleasing God? And then how do we know it's God? How do we know how to please God to live up his expectations? So yeah. what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I really ever thought about that process like much in my life. Like we, we think about pleasing people that we love, pleasing our friends, certainly pleasing ourselves, what makes me happy. But, you know, I think we think of God as this being who doesn't really care or who has everything that he needs. So anything I do doesn't really matter to mm -hmm. him. So what? what's even the point of trying to please him? He's always happy, you know, he's always God, nothing I can do can change that. So, um, and I think that that idea of trying to please someone, uh, when we think about it in terms of God, but we're, we're just at a loss. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a really important part and really, you know, embedded in this parable of the talent, you know, this, this servant didn't even, didn't even try to come close to pleasing the king. Mm -hmm. The other two did, the other like, took the money, took the talents that he given him and went out and made and doubled their money and came back and it pleased the king, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many times we are like that third servant that we just kind of shut down. Well, I'm just gonna bury it. Mm -hmm. What do you care? You got, mm -hmm. you got billions and billions of dollars. What do you care about this one little bag of gold and throwing in the dirt, you know? Right. Right. So I think that's, you know, we need to be really conscious about, about this idea that our relationship to God does affect him mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly affects us, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and that we need to be a people that, that strive to please him. And we talked about it last week, and we do that through obedience. Right. You know, we do right. that by obeying what he said to do through his word. Right. Um, and that's, that's the bottom line of how we please him. Right. Yeah, yeah I think that, um, like you said, we, we think, well, it's God, he has everything. You know, but if we really look at it as a relationship instead of, well, he's God and I'm me, he, he sent his son to die on the cross for us. That's how significant we are to him. That's yeah. how important we are to him. So if we look at the relationship side of it instead of this duty-bound mm -hmm. thing, um, then there's maybe a better understanding yeah. of what's God's love language? What's my yeah. God? What's my love language? Yep. You know, uh, because, because we love each other and yeah. we have this relationship and it is significant. You know, if, if I think it doesn't matter that I'm saying that God doesn't think I matter Yeah. and he does, yep. he paid a big price. Absolutely. For me, so, yeah. 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 So, that. um, yeah, it's, it means a lot to me, that whole relation component. Yep. Um, and I think it's really important that we we don't look at our relationship as that duty bound mentality. Mm -hmm. Like it is not a check mark. I'm not obeying so that I can say that I obeyed. Right. I'm obeying because I love. Mm -hmm. And because I love, I want to please, therefore I obey, you know? But it's it's bound in that relationship, absolutely. Definitely. I think the, the relationship component is where our faith comes from, mm -hmm. right? So God invites us into this relationship and by faith, we agree, right? Yeah. It's a step of faith. And then without that faith, we couldn't obey because God's going to ask some big things of us, yep. right? <laughs> because then he says, now that I've invited you in and you are mine and you're part of my kingdom, yeah. there's some responsibilities in the house. There's yep. some responsibilities in my land. Yep. And so out of that relationship comes responsibility. And I'm going to ask you to have faith and trust in me to obey. Yeah. And that pleases me. Absolutely. And so now framed in that relational um, area, then what happens is we're compelled through the power of the Holy Spirit to obey. Yep. We don't have to do it in our own strength. Yeah. We can't do it in our own strength. We yeah. can't. No. Yeah. And because when we're doing it in our own strength, then it becomes the check mark. Yep. Okay, here's the things I have to do. Let me figure out how to do them. Yep. Let me muster up the plan and the, and yep. the capability. <laughs> and now I got it. And then we're always going to fall short because we're still missing the relationship. Yeah. You can't have the relationship without the responsibility. And you can't have the responsibility without, without the relationship. They're married. That's right. They're married. 
Yeah. The other th thing I, I heard in there um, was the word fear. There was fear mm. in a couple things. The word fear was used twice. And then also just, it's kind of scary when you think of the results of not pleasing God, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we don't want to obey out of fear, mm -hmm. right? But our relationship with the Lord and the faith that comes with that conquers the fear yeah. so that we can boldly step in to the obedience with confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how do we know what obedience looks like? Mm. How do we know what God requires of us? Yeah. I think it really, it looks like us, again, striving to please him. That's really what obedience is. It's knowing his word. Mm -hmm. It's understanding what he has said. Mm -hmm. um, next week, we start going through the Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached. And Jesus lays out some pretty straightforward things of how do we obey? These are the things that we do to obey. Mm -hmm. But we do what he says. We think what he thinks. We feel what he feels. Even emotionally, we can follow in obedience mm -hmm. to Jesus. Um, and I, I love how that, that obedience is wed with our own desires, mm -hmm. that when we have that relationship with God, when we want to please him, that's when we desire to obey him. And I think that's, that is the point, you know, mm -hmm. that we are doing the things that he said. We're loving others. We're loving people. Mm -hmm. We're loving God. We are spending time with him. We are saying no to our flesh and the godliness of our flesh. All those things he lays out for us so, so clearly in, in Matthew 5 through 8 in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. That's how we obey. But that is also how we love God. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, isn't that, that's really beautiful, right? Our obedience is how we show love. It's an expression of love. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the time when I was reading through the Ten Commandments and all of a sudden the Lord showed me, this is my love letter to you. Mm. Yeah. You know, we often look at the Ten Commandments as here's the things do you this, have to do, 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 do. Thou shalt, do. thou shalt. Yeah, and he's actually saying, I love you so much yeah. that I'm going to give you these ten things mm -hmm. that I want you to really focus on and, and abide by. Yeah. And, and you're going to have a better life for it. Yep. You're going to understand me better. We're going to be closer. We're going to have a better relationship for it. And when I, when I had the understanding that that was his love letter to his people, yeah. not this, we shouldn't even call them the Ten Commandments. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, it really changed my relationship with the Lord yeah. as well. So. I love that concept of, of God's love letter because that's, that's really what Scripture is. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is. He came down as the embodiment of love for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and it is out of his love that he's given us opportunity to have relationship in faith, mm -hmm. through obedience, and it's, it's all begun by him. Right, yeah. right. And then it's not a burden. You know, he says his yoke is easy. Yeah. So he doesn't say, come follow me and I'm going to give you a list of things to do yep. and you're going to be dragging yourself around for the rest of your life just trying to please me. Yeah. He says, come, if you're weary, my yoke is easy. Yeah. I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. Yeah. Rest for your soul, yeah. right. And what I hear you saying is if we want to know how to please God and obey God, we need to be with God. Yeah. We need to um, abide in Him yep. and get to know Him. Yeah. And He gives us opportunities to do that through, first of all, His Word, yep. and then um, just through prayer and through yeah. song, through uh, being with other believers, yep. you know, having spiritual conversations, yep, which are so like rewarding this. for me, yeah. uh, and, and when I have conversations with other people. So just that abiding is so important. And often we focus on the doing yep. or the abiding. And again, it's the same thing. We need to we marry those two together. together. Yeah. Yeah. So we were laughing right before the, the, the record button hit. Yeah. But you know, when I was in a, when I was in high school, I, um, I think junior senior year I became part of the NHS, you know, National Honor Society. And the only reason, like bar none, the only reason why I went after that is so that I could get the core to graduation. You know, I could wear that little thing around and say, look at me, I'm an HS guy. I went to the very first meeting, was inducted, whatever I did, never once went back. I couldn't tell you a single thing that NHS stands for. I couldn't tell you any of our officers. I could tell you nothing, but I got that stinking court. Got court right. <laughs> That's how I think most of us view the walk of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the cord, mm -hmm. so everything doesn't, uh, nothing else matters. Nothing matters right? And yet when God says, and this parable is like in parable this week, last week, the last few that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. says, no, that's not what it's about. It's right. about abiding. Right. It's about trusting in faith. And it's right. about following him in obedience. Right. Right. Um, and again, the, the stark challenge of that, mm -hmm. of that parable is that, are you really going to get that cord? Right. If you're living this way, right. I shouldn't have gotten the NHS cord. I, it's not that I didn't deserve it. I didn't 
follow any of the guidelines. I, I, I wasn't an NHS member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us who said a prayer when they were a little kid, sure. you know, we're relying on the fact that we did something 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago that we, we don't believe today. Mm -hmm. If we believe that we would live it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the heartbeat of these parables. Right, it is. Yeah. It's the heartbeat of saying, if you believe that I died on the cross and rose from the grave and forgive you of your sins so that you can have eternal life with me, if you believe that, then you will believe who I am yeah. and you will follow me. You will allow me to transform you. Yeah. And, and you will live this way. Absolutely. And, they're, and they're tied together. And um, I think it's difficult sometimes to face that we do have unbelief mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. lives. And that's really what you're challenging us to, yeah. is do we really believe? Yeah. Do we really have faith? Yeah. Do we really trust the one who loves us? Yeah. And, and again, I'm going to say it again, died on the cross for our sins and paid a huge price for us. Do we really believe? If we believe he did that, then do we believe? Then do we believe all these other things? Yeah. And if we do, it shows up. Yep, how we It live. just shows up. It's a fruit, Yep. you know. So, great. Well, great conversation. Yeah. Thanks so Thanks much for doing that. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear your comments. Um, these are just the things that we're thinking about, <laughs> so we know you're thinking about some things too. So share your comments, and we look forward to reading them. Thank you, and God bless.